Hello folks. So how do we add collision into this platformer? Well, luckily Pygame's got built-in collision detection and that makes things a lot easier and I'm going to explain how to use it now. If you remember, when I f first set up this player and all these tiles, I mentioned that I was creating rectangles from all of them and I'm going to be using that for collision. So all of these rectangles, you can't really see at the moment, they're, but they are there in the background. And so to help visualize things, what I'm going to do is actually draw these rectangles out. So if we go back to my player class, you remember when I've got this constructor here, this init function, I load the image and then I create a rectangle from it by saying self image dot get underscore rect. So this rectangle is always attached. It's always a property of this player instance when I create it. So although you can't see it, it always has this rectangle. So let's show it on the screen. If I go all the way down here to my update method, and I come down to where I'm drawing the player onto the screen. At the moment, I'm using the split function, which takes the image and puts it onto the screen. So now I can also draw that rectangle. And within Pygame, there's a function for drawing shapes. So I say pygame.draw, and then I would say rectangle. So this could be a line or circle, but I'm drawing a rectangle just now. So first of all, you need to supply the game window that you're putting this onto. In my case, that's screen. Then you give it a color. So I'll go with white. And then lastly, I need the rectangle. Well. My rectangle is always part of this instance or of this class, so I just say self.rect. Uh, if I was to run this just now, it's going to give me a solid block. So let's run this. And you see the player is just entirely covered in this white rectangle. I don't really want that, so I'm going to add an extra argument, which is going to be my line thickness or line weight. If I say 2, instead of filling it, it just creates a 2 pixel wide rectangle around them. So this rectangle is always there. Essentially what the game did at the very beginning when I initialized this, it took the outline of the picture and then it just drew a rectangle around it. So now I can do the exact same thing for the world. I've got my init function, which is already creating rectangles for each of the tiles with this get rect function. So if I go down here where I'm drawing each of the tiles, I can do the exact same thing here. Pygame.draw.rect. We put this onto the screen. I'm going to make it white. And I need the rectangle itself. So remember, with these tiles, I, I saved each of the tiles as a tuple. So the first point is, or the first index is the image, and then the second one is the rectangle. So to access those properties, I just say tile, square brackets, one. So, oh, and again, I need to remember to put my line thickness here. If I run this, now you can see all these rectangles. So I think visualizing them makes it a little bit clearer to understand what's going on in the background. So now I'm just going to be doing collision detection by going through each of these rec each of these um, tiles one by one and then checking have they collided with this player's rectangle, i.e. are they overlapping. So for example, this one right now would give me a detection that it is overlapping here. So that's quite easy. If I'm just going through all of those individual tiles, it means all I need to do is run a for loop. So let's come up to my player class where I've got my update function. And if you remember, I added a section here. So I've got my key presses for controls, animation, then I've got gravity, and then I left this area blank with just a comment saying check for collision. So this is where the collision is going to go. So just make a little bit of room here, uh, and then we can start adding the code. So like I say, I'm going to be going through each of the individual tiles, which means I need a for loop. So I'll say for tile in, and again, I'm just going through each of the tiles within my map. So remember, I've created an instance of this world, which if I scroll back all the way down here, is right here. I've got world is an instance of the world class. So that means that I can access any of the variables of that world class by saying world dot and then whatever the, the variable I need. So the tile list here is saved as self dot tile list. So if I just say world dot tile list, it will allow me to access this. So let's come back up here where I'm looking for collision and I just say for tile in world, which is the instance dot tile list which is the list associated with that instance. So when I'm iterating through each of one of these, I just want to look for collision. Now I'm going to need to look for collision in the X and the Y coordinates separately, because it's possible for the player to collide in the Y direction, but still move in the X direction. For example, if he's on top of a block, he is colliding with it in the Y direction because gravity wants to pull him down through it and it's stopping him, but he's still free to move in the X direction. So let's break this down. First of all, check for collision in y direction. 
So to do this, I'm going to go through each of these tiles. So I'm already iterating through them. That means that if I just say if tile, then I'm going to be getting that particular one. And remember, the rectangle data was stored at index 1. 0 is the image. So this is where I look for that Pygame collide function. And the function is collide rect. So there's different types of collision, but collide rect is the one we're going to be using because all of our objects are rectangles anyway. So this makes it all quite easy. So the input here is going to be the rectangle that I want to check collision against. So this is the tile, as in any of the squares on the map. So the rectangle I want to check for collision against is my player. So I could just say self.rect, which is the rectangle of this player class. However, what would happen if I ran this is that it's going to give me collision detection after the fact. So once the player has actually hit or overlapped one of the tiles on the level, then it's going to say it's collided. But by that point, it's too late because he's already overlapping with it. I need to detect collision before that happens. So to try and illustrate this, what I'm basically saying is the red box is the player, black box is any of the tiles that I'm checking for collision with. If I was to check collision like I just described by saying self.rect, then it's going to tell me, yes, there's a collision here, but it's too late. I'm already overlapping. But if you remember, if I go back to this code, I had a dx and a dy variable. So when I move the player to the left or the right, it's the dx that I change. And when he falls or he jumps, it's the dy that changes. And this delta x and delta y don't immediately update the rectangle position. You notice I'm checking for collision before I make any updates. So essentially what I'm saying here is that the player hasn't actually moved, but he intends to move by this much. So what I can do instead is almost like create a temporary dummy rectangle, this green one here, based on the new dx or the dy. So I take the position where he's at now, and then in this case, it's just shifted over to the right. So I'm checking for where he would be if I added that dx value. So if there is collision at that point, then I can make adjustments based on that before I actually get to this stage. So that's what I want to do first of all. So let's come back here. We're saying if we have a collision with a rectangle that is going to be at this increased position. So essentially what I need to put in here is a new rectangle. So that's going to take an x and a y coordinate, a width and a height. So the x coordinate is easy. That's just a rect.x of the player as it is. The y coordinate is also easy. It's self.rect.y plus dy. So it's wherever he's planning to move to. And then lastly, I need width and height, which I don't have at the moment. But if I come back up to my constructor, uh, the moment here I create my rectangle from the image, and then I say where my x and the y coordinates are. So just below this, I can extract the width and height. So I can say self.width equals self.image, which is the picture that is loaded at any one time, dot get underscore width. And this is just going to take the width of that, pic uh, of that image. Then I just do the exact same thing for height. Just copy that down, change the width to height. And that's it. I've got my width and height variables for my rectangle. So if I go back down here to where I'm checking for collision, I just add these properties right at the end here. So self.width and self.height. So I'm not really doing anything unusual here. If you're checking for collision with a rectangle, you can either just give it an existing rectangle object, or you can manually type out the x, y, width, and the height, because this here, those properties essentially are a rectangle. This is how you would create one if you needed to. So if I've got collision in the y direction, well, that's fine, but I need to know whether I'm ha whether this is happening because I'm falling onto an object or whether I'm jumping and I'm hitting my head. So I need to check whether the block, the player is below or above the block. So let's say check if below the ground. Uh, and it's easy, right? This means I'm jumping. That's the only time that I would hit, uh, I would get a collision from below a block. It's because he's jumped and he's hit his head. So i.e. jumping. And whether I'm jumping or not, or whether I'm jumping or falling, is determined by this y velocity variable. Remember, if I've got a positive velocity, it means that I'm falling due to gravity, and a negative velocity means I'm jumping, because remember, the y coordinate is flipped. So I can just say, if self.vel underscore y is less than zero, well, that means I'm moving up the way, that means I've just jumped, so he's just hit his head off the underside of a block. So what I need to do in this case essentially, is say, and I go back to this picture, well, okay, this is X collision, but the same effectively applies. I'm drawing a green rectangle 
above or below, depending on whether I'm jumping or falling. And I'm saying that if I move all of that distance, there will be a collision. But I can move part of that distance, right? Red is where I'm just where I'm at right now. Green is where I would be if I moved the entire distance, and black is the outline of the square. But I am able to move this distance here. So let's just work out what that distance is, and then move it by that much. So I come back here. Now I know that my dy is already pre-calculated, but I know that if I move that much, I will have a collision. So let's just reduce dy to the maximum that I'm allowed to move. So if I'm jumping, then my dy must be the distance between the top of the player's head and the bottom of the block that he's just about to hit. So we can just extract those values. So this is the rectangle of, this, of the level blocks, and I just want the bottom of it. And I want to take the distance between that and the top of the player. So that's it. That's just going to limit how far he actually moves. He's just going to move until he bumps his head, and then that's it. So now I just copy this back down, make a second argument here, and this one is going to be the opposite. I'm now checking if above the ground, i.e. falling. So let's set this to greater than or equals to, whoops, greater than or equal to zero. And uh, now it's the exact same thing, but it's just flipped. So now he's landing on something. So the distance that he's allowed to move is going to be the top of the tile minus the bottom of the player rectangle, which is his feet. So let's run this, just make sure it works. And I've made a mistake somewhere. Right there, I've made a typo. Try that again. Okay, so there you go. Straight away you can see he's not falling through the ground. He's now standing on top of the blocks. And I can run around, ignore the fact that he's automatically moving up. I don't have X collision yet. So if I jump up, you see he falls, but then he lands on one of these blocks. So he doesn't go through them. And he's able to move around without any problems. However, you notice here, when he jumps and bumps his head, he kind of floats for a second. It's almost like he gets stuck to it. Whereas when I jump here, it's a natural movement. He goes up and down, but here he gets stuck. So the reason for that is that although I'm detecting this collision, if you remember, his up and down, well, the fact that he's moving up and down is covered by this dy variable, is sorry, is y velocity. So when he hits his head, his y velocity, remember, as soon as I jump, the y velocity becomes negative. And when it hits his head, it's not reset to zero. It's still calculating in the background. So he basically stands there for a split second until gravity overtakes and brings him back down. But essentially what I need to do is say that, well, when he's hit his head, his y velocity must be zero. Same for when he's landed on the ground, because he can't possibly be moving up or down anymore. So I just need to add this extra check to here. I just need to say that self.val underscore y becomes zero because he's, he's collided. He can't possibly be moving. So let's run this again. I'll try that again now. And I have made a mistake. He's now going through it. Okay, let's see what I've done here. Uh, yeah, I can see what I've done. So uh, this is an easy way to get tripped up with if statements. So I'm not looking for this collision and then that collision. That's effectively what was happening. I'm looking for one of the two collisions, right? because I, I can only detect collision with one block at a time, really. So if I'm jumping or if I'm falling, so let's try this again and come up here. And now there you go. So he just bounces straight off, hits his head and just bounces straight back down. So X collision or sorry, Y collision is working perfectly. And uh, now I can just add in X collision. So I've got all this code here for Y direction. I'm going to come back and type this in above it because X collision is actually a lot easier in this case. So just underneath where I've got this for loop, for tile in world tile list, I'll now add a comment to say check for collision in X direction. And now the collision is going to be the exact same thing. So I can actually copy this line from below, paste it as here just to save typing, except now I'm going to be, instead of saying self rect Y plus DY, I'm moving left and right, yeah? So now it's plus dx on the x-coordinate. Everything else stays the same. Width and height is the same. His y-coordinate doesn't change. We're looking for only collision in the x-direction when he's moved left and right. So if he has collided in the left and right direction, well, this one's actually quite easy. We just say, stop moving. dx becomes zero. So if I run this code now, there you go. You can't go any farther. So it's detecting that if he keeps moving, there will be a collision. So we just say don't move anymore, stop at that point. But he's still able to move around on top of blocks, and this is why X and Y collision is done separately. If I did them together, 
you notice he would be technically detecting collision right now because gravity is trying to pull him through the ground. It's finding that at that point there would be collision. So if I was doing them together, then he would just stop moving altogether. He would just be stuck all the time rooted here because it's saying there is a collision. But because I'm doing them separately, it means that I can control the Y collision so he doesn't fall through the ground or jump up through anything, but he's still able to move left and right. And it kind of means he can jump and slide along things as well. So this also means I don't really have to worry about doing collision off the side of the screen because I've got all these blocks here, so I don't even need to add those checks. So that's it. That's how you add collision in, in this kind of game. So if you found this useful, then please do leave a like. Uh, if you want to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.